Hi everyone, it's Alexa. I hope everyone is at home staying safe. We miss you all and we hope that you're enjoying watching our video so far. This is the second video talking about poetry questions. If you haven't watched our first video where Aisha analyzes the poem Ode to Fireworks, please watch that first. And in the description is a link to the worksheet that we're gonna be going over together today. Once you go back and watch that, come back to this video with the questions then and we'll go over them together. So here are some tips for answering poetry questions. Read the text carefully. So this one, we kind of went over in the last video. We basically analyzed the poem as much as we could. And that is really, the stuff that we learned in the last video is really gonna help us answer the questions today. Take notes. So I know a lot of you have different strategies of doing this. Some people underline, some people write in the margins. I did both today. Um, whatever helps you, but is poems get more complicated and if a passage is confusing, it's worth to take the, the extra time in understanding the most important parts of the poem. Three is think about the title. The title of this poem is Ode to Fireworks. Um, I didn't know what ode meant until about 10 minutes ago, um, but it, you don't need to to understand the poem. If you did, ode means kind of when you're a poem that talks about something lovingly. So here we're talking about fireworks lovingly. Um, but even seeing fireworks in the title tells us what we're talking about because it doesn't really say fireworks that clearly until much later on in the poem. So that could be very helpful. Think about the speaker. So in the last video, we did a chart where we said who, what, and where. For who, we put the narrator. Um, it's going to be important to understand who's speaking um, and their opinions and their feelings and to think about the mood and the tone. So again, in the last video we did this, um, we said that the tone was happy and nostalgic. That comes up in the questions. Yeah. So now we're going to do the questions. Um, some of the strategies I used were, were process of elimination and to read all the answer choices carefully. Um, in I've seen you guys, sometimes you just see the first answer that looks okay and you circle it and move on. But a lot of times they like to trick you and we don't wanna let them. So we have to read every single one, get rid of the other ones by process of elimination and have the highest probability of getting the right answer. So question one, the fireworks in the poem represent the speakers. A, wish to return to a simpler way of living. Even though we look back on the past in this poem in a good way and we reflect and we're happy about the old memories and the fireworks, this would assume that the writer wants to go back and live in the country and not the city. Even though we look back on the past, never does it say, I wish I was there right now or I wish I moved back there. And unless it's very clear in the text that that happened, we can't assume. So this might be a trick one right away, but if we understood the passage and we understood that that wasn't in the text, um, then we can't choose that answer. I remember I used to grill you guys, go back to the text every single time and you would get annoyed, but it's the only way to get the answer right. B, bittersweet feelings about leaving the past behind. So if you don't know, bittersweet means both good and bad. Bitter is the bad part, sweet is the good part. When the author is looking back at the old memories, she or he is very happy and thinking very well about these old memories, but also talks about all of the good parts of being in the city in the third stanza. So it's talking about both and it doesn't, so this answer might make sense. We're gonna leave it. And um, high expectations for everyday life. So in the fireworks and the poem, was that an everyday thing that everyone hung out and saw fireworks? No, for this was a very special occasion. Everyone brought their family and it was a fair. So it doesn't really talk about everyday life here. So we can't choose that as the answer. D, reflections of past interactions with relatives. Um, even though we do talk about relatives, like we said in the chart for who, we talk about the mom and the sister and the cousin, um, the fireworks don't really represent that. That's too specific and um, it's more talking about the speaker's life in a general sense. So it's not D, so the answer is C. Question two, the comparison in lines eight through nine of the poem is used to convey 
So what do we do? We took a look back to lines eight through nine. So I put them here for the first low dealt once, like someone beating an old filthy rug hung on a wash line. That doesn't really make sense unless we read the context. So every time it tells us to look back, you want to read the lines before and the lines after. So I immediately went to the text and I underlined lines eight through nine. And before we're talking about the setup for these fireworks that we're about to describe, we waited in the darkness for the low dull thwumps like someone beating an old filthy rug hung on a wash line. Then we counted the seconds between lightning and thunder as we used to do until the sky lit up red, blue, green, gold. So this is talking about the sounds that she's hearing, right? So you hear before the fireworks come out for the first low dull thwumps. I don't know what you can see that it's representing a sound because it says like someone beating an old filthy rug hung on a wash line. So when you hear beating a rug, you hear this, right? So that's kind of what these fireworks were sounding like. This is all what you should be thinking before you even look at the answer choices. A, the muffled pounding of explosions in the distance. So we are, we realize that we're talking about the fireworks here. Um, so this could be a really good answer. And we see, we see the word pounding. So it's kind of similar to the sound. B, the way lightning streaks through the clouds. So here we're kind of talking about the way something looks, right? So you see the lightning streaks through the clouds, you would see that. But we see that lines eight through nine is talking about the sound. So it's not really the way something looks. So it's not B. So C, the echoes of thunder on an autumn night. So here we are talking about sounds, which is kind of tricky. And it's even trickier because the lines right after talks about thunder. But we, before we decided that these lines were talking about the sounds of fireworks. So immediately we can get rid of this one. D, the glow of sparks falling from the sky. Again, we're not really seeing anything. These are sounds we're hearing. Answer for question two is A. So question three, read lines 22 through 23 from the poem. The, the sky at night written upon with those jewels. So that doesn't really tell us enough. We have to go back in the text and understand where they're talking about. For these, this is a detailed question which we went over together in class. And the key to detailed questions is going back and understanding the context. So if we go back, we realize we're in the second stanza or paragraph where we're still describing the fireworks. So this is a way to describe the fireworks the sky at night written upon with those jewels. And the jewels are shiny and bright and beautiful. And that's how they're using it to describe the fireworks. So what does the word choice in these lines convey? A, the speaker values material possessions. So that would be if we're talking about the jewels literally, but we're not, we're talking about it figuratively and what they mean. Um, so it's not A. B, the speaker imagines that the fireworks are magical. Um, again, this talks about how the speaker feels a certain way. The speaker imagines that the fireworks are magical. But in these lines, we're really only describing the, the environment and the view. We're not really talking about how the speaker imagines there or anything about the speaker. So again, we can't assume that. C, the speaker believes that the country setting is distinctive. The speaker, again, isn't really talking about the country setting. Once we understand that the speaker is talking about fireworks, this kind of makes this question easier. So it's not talking about the country. D, the speaker cherishes the memory of seeing fireworks as a child. So this is the answer because it is talking about fireworks and it's very specific. Question four, the use of italics on the word night in line 24 is most likely intended to emphasize the, so Aisha told us in the last video why we use italics. We use italics to emphasize things. And if you were paying attention, she told us the answer to this by why they use night and gave us this example. So what do we have to do? Go back to line 24, line 24 and a little bit around it. So it says, we lived in the country, night was night. So we live in New York, so we may not imagine this because we see big buildings and lights. And if you think of Times Square, it's so bright. But to understand this, 
I picture an, a farm in the country where there are no big buildings, there are no bright lights. So when it says we are in the country, night was night, it shows that it's in the darkness, right? So there aren't any lights. It's very different from what we're used to. And it's different from in the last paragraph when she's in the city, because night is not completely dark in the city. So now with that, let's look at the answer choices. So A, sense of mystery in the darkness. We don't really talk about the sense of mystery anywhere. Um, in this, it's really just a description of a setting. It's not talking about the mystery of anything. Um, sense of absolute darkness. So in the past video, we said that this was the answer. It's emphasizing the part of night that is dark. And if you look around it, it's all descriptive. So that really tells us that this is used as a descriptive um, word. So we're gonna say maybe. Um, C, speaker's fear of night. I already exited out here because we already said, this is, we didn't talk about the speaker. We've seen as a pattern that we can't really assume what the speaker feels. So again, it can't be this one. This is describing an environment. It's not describing how the speaker feels about it yet. And D, speaker's certainty about that night. So this could be a trick question. As we said, italics are used to emphasize. So sometimes if I said, let's say the answer is B, B, it's emphasizing that um, that's the answer. I'm sure about it. I'm certain about it. But that's not how we use italics in this question. In this question, we're using it to emphasize a description of something. So the answer is B. So question five, this is a function question. So what is the purpose of the repeated words rising and falling in lines 26 and 37? So why did the author put rising and falling? It had to be for a reason, right? So we're gonna go back and look at where they use it. So immediately when you look back at the text, lines 26 is in the second paragraph and line 37 is in the third. So when we analyze the poem, we realize the second paragraph was talking about the country, the childhood, the past. The third paragraph is talking about the city, the present, what's happening in the narrator's life right now. So that's an immediate difference between the first and the second time. So lines 26, it's a read around it and we say, all around us, crickets stridulated in the stubble of what had been somebody's cornfield, their song rising and falling. So it's talking about crickets. I have a sound of crickets right here, if you haven't heard them before. You can hear their noise goes up, down, up, down, up, down, rising and falling. And it's painting a picture and describing the life in the country, right? If we look on lines 37 now, it says, um, all, and the music around me is the music of people, their voices rising and falling in a hundred languages. So now we're in the city and we're talking about crowds of people and you hear voices and conversations rising and falling. Picture big crowds when you hear everything going on at the same time. These are two very different um, environments that we're describing, but we're using the same words. So we have that understanding going into the answer choices. So A to create a distinction between solitude and meaningful interaction. So solitude means being alone, meaningful interaction, that would be talking to people, being with people. This may trick us because in the first line, it's talking about quietness and um, being alone and hearing the crickets alone. In the second part, it's talking about hearing all these voices and being with all these people. But that's not the purpose of repeating the two because they, this is more about description, again, of the environment. B, to demonstrate a connection between the speaker's past and present. So as we said, when we look about where these are, the second paragraph is attached to her past and the third attached to her present. So this answer choice would make sense, but we'll look through all of them, always. So. C, to emphasize the speaker's attention to the surrounding sounds. So even though the speaker is hearing all of these sounds, again, we're not talking about the speaker, we're still talking about description. D, to compare the fireworks to common sights and sounds. 
neither of these are talking about the fireworks. Neither of them are comparing the fireworks. The first part is talking about crickets. The second is talking about crowds of people. So the fireworks aren't mentioned. So we can eliminate that as well, which means the answer is B. So question six, what impact does the phrase, everything is a constant celebration, line 33, have in the poem? So line 33, we went back to the third stanza in the third paragraph. At this point, you should be associating each part of the paragraph with setting and how the speaker feels. So in the third paragraph, we're in the city and we're trying to understand why they used everything as a constant celebration. So line 33. If you picture a small town where there are only a couple people, maybe going to the store, you see one person, you see a neighbor. But in the city, if I'm trying to go to the supermarket, I'm going to see hundreds of people like in five seconds. So that's what I picture when I hear a constant celebration, not necessarily um, a party or anything. A, it reveals that the speaker finds the city more pleasurable than the country. This is not explicitly said and it's not that you can't infer it. All it says is that everything in the city is a celebration, doesn't compare it to the past necessarily, doesn't say. B, it suggests that the persistent brightness of the city can be overwhelming to the speaker. So even though we are talking about brightness, we again, you can't assume what the narrator is feeling and we're still just describing the setting. Here it says overwhelming to the speaker. We don't really talk about whether or not it's overwhelming to the speaker. We just are talking about what city life is like. C, it implies that what is normal in the city was unusual in the country. So let's look at the lines around it. So it says, everything is a constant celebration picking up washing at the cleaners or stopping by the corner market for a loaf of heavy bread. So these are all everyday things, right? It's saying that even those things in the city is a celebration. You see people, you talk to people, um, and that is not anything that you picture in the country. Like I said earlier, maybe you see one person on your way um, in a small town. It is saying that in this city, there's things that are normal that the narrator never experienced in the old in the country. So C is an option. <laughs> we have to look at all of it. Oh, D. Um, it emphasizes the hectic pace of city, of daily life in the city. So it doesn't really talk about the hectic pace in this. If it said everything is a constant race or any sort of hint that this has to do with pace or time, pace is kind of how fast you do something. So the answer is C. Question seven. Read lines 41 through 42 from the poem. I kept waiting for those childhood bursts, watching as they escorted us home. So if you look at the context a little bit, it's the last two lines of the passage and right before it's talking about the city and then it says, even when all the city thing is going on, but beneath the yellowish, yellowish glow deep in the sky of all our city lights pelting out into the universe. I remember the feel of the pickup truck bumping across the rigid field as I kept waiting for those childhood bursts, watching as they escorted us home. So it's saying, compared to all of what's going on in the city, the speaker is still remembering all of those old memories from their past and from their childhood and from the country. So that's the context, going back to the text. And here, um, how does the memory affect the speaker? A, the speaker believes it is impossible to ever return to a place in the past. So that is, again, you're assuming something that the speaker feels, even though they didn't say anything about it. We never mention going back to the past or a place in the past. So this answer is immediately eliminated. B, the speaker is still amused by the impatience felt during the fireworks displays. Amused means you find something enjoyable. Even though the speaker might have felt impatient waiting for the pickup truck to come and pick them up, that's not really the point of this section. It's not the reason why the memory was shared. So C, the speaker now regrets abandoning the rural way of life. Again, similar to why we eliminated choice A, um, this speaker never explicitly says that they regret abandoning the rural way. Um, so you can't assume that that's how they feel. So D, the speaker feels a sense of comfort when reflecting on the past. So when I look back on the happiest memories from my childhood, I feel a sense of comfort and love and happiness. So that's kind of how the speaker was feeling in this moment as well. 
author looking back on it with nostalgia and happiness, which is the tone. So this question also has to do with tone. So the answer is D. Okay, so here is the answer key to anyone who needs it of all seven questions. I'll leave it up for a second, you can pause. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. Keep watching these videos. We're gonna try to work as hard as we can to make them good, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.